car? Uh-huh, yes. So put me on speaker. I want everyone to hear this. Uh-oh. Should I be nervous? Yes, my mother kiss twitted my fucking tip off! Yes, my mother kiss twitted my fucking tip off! Okay, here's a short recap if you missed it, if, if it really matters. No, it doesn't. Firstly, Velma has a thing for Daphne and they fight a lot and Fred is also there. He's retarded. They find out a bunch of idiot whores are being murdered and then Fred's mom is behind it all because she wanted to find a new female brain to put into her son to control him because women are better than men or something. And he was supposed to take over her big rich business and all that nonsense. So she dies because she's evil and, and then Velma's mom comes back because she was missing and no one gave a shit. Oh yeah, and every Everyone sucks also. Velma is saying that she feels super cool now because she solved a murder and she's going to party with her girlfriend Daphne, who says they're not a couple and doesn't want to tell anyone that because she can't get over that Velma told Black Shaggy that she loves him on accident even though she expect- Why- Why do people watch romance shows like this? I'm already getting a headache. This is stupid, I don't give a shit. Relationship things are happening, how is that? So they find the corpse of the sheriff from Harvester that eats Stephanie's mom's pie when she dies and then berates the other guy with a newspaper if he masturbates in the prison cell. Sh sheriff Dwayne Dwayne, was that what that guy's called? So I'm gonna call this guy that. He Fred says he found Jesus to stop ghosts. I mean, there's a first time for everything. There's this new kid called Amber who looks like every TikTok user I've ever seen and probably smells like them too, especially the fat activist. Guess who she's related to? They ruined the Hex Girls for this. They brought back Thorn for this entire season and they ruined it. They made her like a weird meth addicted washed up superstar who is now a single mom who's into witchcraft and runs a bookstore with a non-binary daughter who <laughs> it looks like this. Velma is really angry because everyone finds these white women cool and she has to go find Black Shaggy to help her solve the crime because she got like reddit atheist conversation with this girl and then it didn't go well. I guess the season's theme is like drama with Black Shag Shaggy and Velma and Daphne and then this girl as well. Wait till you see her character. She's basically a Mary Sue. Every single thing that she does is like, oh, she's super cool, but people don't understand her. And she is like a super cool witch who knows everything and is like always on top of everything. And she's so cool that even the redneck right wing bigot sort of characters that the show presents also use her pronouns because she's just so cool. Black Shaggy is having flashbacks of the ghost of Fred saying that um, he killed Fred's mom because that's what happened last time. And it's not Fred's mom who's haunting him. It's Fred himself even though Fred's still alive. I don't know how that shit works. Is it supposed to be doing that? Yeah, it's like his whole shtick. Fred's also religious purely for his ghost hunting business because making fun of Abrahamic gods is funny and won't get you thrown off a rooftop but you, and you look really edgy to the people that you want to impress. It's you're not making fun of other people who would throw you off a rooftop for saying that kind of thing because you don't actually want to be edgy. Hmm. Really makes you think. Basically, Velma tries to dig up the grave of Fred's mom to see if she's actually back somehow because she didn't actually die and she's the one who's behind the murders. But Black Shaggy tries to attack her and she doesn't know it's him, but it's him and she grabs the shoe that he left behind and does prints on it in secret because her mom is convinced that doing mysteries will get her killed and is like hyper vigilant. Hey, what's up with this new Amber person? They seem super cool, but I always feel safer going along with y'all's opinions of people. Yeah, Amber goes by they them, by the way. Anyway, the girls think she's cool and Velma is annoyed by that because, you know, what the fuck? There's this really unfunny, like, hallucination of Fred. You killed my mom. She was the bomb. God never allows pain without a purpose! I- this is the humor. Every time I make these kinds of videos, I always tell you, like, I'm cutting out a bunch of shit that you should thank me for cutting out because it's really stupid. Every single thing that happens with the relationship stuff that I cut out is all this. Every single thing is a self-referential shitty joke that went out of style before it was even in style. You know what I mean? But it's, it's established that Black Shaggy loves food, get it? 
get it, but because he, if he stress eats, the hallucinations go away. He also wasn't at the graveyard to attack her. He was actually there to also do the same thing that she was doing, but he took the shoe of the attacker as well, so they both have a pair of shoes. Daphne suspects that the mums, her mums, uh, who are detectives in the town, killed Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne so that they could become sheriff because now that he's dead, they're running a campaign for sheriff. The funeral was also missing his body, and Fred is accidentally destroying evidence because he's a bumbling white male who is really stupid and always needs all the women to help him. The mums weren't actually behind it though, despite the fact that they're very incompetent and stupid and horrible to be around. They found a blood puddle three weeks before they even found the sheriff's body, so the sheriff Dwayne Dwayne was missing for three weeks, and that's where they got all their evidence from and that's how they knew at the time that he was dead, even though they hadn't told everyone. Why is Amber here? What is Amber providing to the situation? But then Amber spilled the beans like they were making burritos in an earthquake. <laughs> There's a British teacher as well who I definitely know and, and remember and care about. He's really interested in the case from season 1 and Velma's mom is currently wanting to date him. Velma is also on her Redditor arc for the entire season and keeps saying things about logic and brain meat and how God isn't real because we're all brain meat. Daphne is also fully on her white girl spiritualism arc so they're talking about manifesting but even with this, with this shit, even though they're poking jokes about both of them, they're, they're trying to make it out like manifesting and like rubbing crystals on your body to make the space aliens go away is somehow way more realistic than believing in God in like a Catholic or Christian sense. I know it sounds weird to say that, but that's genuinely the angle that they're going for. And remember, the only religion that you're allowed to make fun of is, is something involving Christianity or Catholicism. All the other religions, no, you can't do that. It's problematic. Why? It's problematic, that's why. Velma was uh, like a shitty, unpopular kid, as you'd imagine, because her personality is grating and awful. But now she is a popular kid because after season one, everyone thinks that she's super smart and brave for solving the murders. And she's like a local celebrity. She's learned absolutely nothing. She hasn't earned this position whatsoever. Even while solving the murder, everyone else was doing the work for her. And it's not like the show was self-aware of this in like an early Bojack Horseman kind of way either. It's just, she's the same insufferable person as she's always been. But the show itself, makes sure that she is rewarded for persisting this way. They also made this joke about how she's so popular that everyone's trying to copy her and they show white Velma. And I know this is a joke, but it's such a bitter joke to make considering these people are 100% absolutely aware of every single thing that a critic has said about how shitty the show is, including the race stuff. So this is very poor taste and they know exactly what they're doing. They're also following this up with this lesson, this episode being about how making jokes about tradition. Like, oh, tradition is bad because there's problems in the world. So doing random traditions to keep your hometown clean or to get people to gather together and have fun is bad because people are starving in Africa, basically. Also, the, the British teacher that I totally care about and remember the name of is dead. So he wasn't behind all of the murder stuff. He, he is part of the murder now. The church makes people not question anything. Now, listen, I, I also think that extremists in religion try to make people not question anything, and I mean every religion, I don't just mean the Abrahamic ones. But saying that in general is really funny, coming from the people who also have a they them on the show and support critical race theory. That's just hilarious that they say that. So the students, the popular girls, are doing this thing called Creaky Friday, where they oil all the doors and gates in town because of some story about it being a mining town, it's a fun tradition that the kids use as a fundraiser to do something good for the community. And Velma hates this because traditions that help the community are bad because people are dying in Africa. And this isn't just like a throwaway joke to make fun of Velma. This is something that routinely comes up in the show by other characters as like a way to poke fun at people doing good for their community instead of poking fun at, you know, Redditors for saying the things that Velma said. For the fundraiser, they have this random selection thing where they put these kids' names in a lottery and then you have to pair up with a person that your name comes up with randomly. And Fred and Velma are supposed to pair up together so that she can force Fred to give her all the clues from the things that he's trying to solve and she's trying to rig it to make sense. They also make a joke that all the Supreme Court is run by Catholics and it's like, okay, so that's why there's people in government who don't know what a woman is? Have fun with that one, America. Amber also gets hit by a car during this incident, but unfortunately, she's not dead. 
She comes back. Real faith is knowing something's true even when it's verifiably false. I could make so many jokes with that, but I'll let you make your own jokes in the comments because I think I'd get in trouble. They find out that a piece of evidence from Dwayne Dwayne's murder was that there was someone with a ghost costume had come in at some point. They don't exactly know when it was, but they know that it was a picture that was taken and maybe they think that the person who was wearing the ghost costume is the person who came back to murder Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne. However, they track her down and Black Shaggy had actually worn the costume as a disguise so he could go and steal the stuff from season one. The stuff from season one is the solution or the like experiment notes on how to do the brain swapping and that was something that his grandma had actually come up with before she disappeared so he wanted to break in to steal that stuff because he wanted to try and figure out what happened and he's also a, a nerd and stupid and gay your baseless belief is shaping your judgment my belief is not baseless hmm. really makes you think Things were removed this is almost as bad as girls having their brains removed Almost. Haha, <laughs> very funny, Velma. Yeah, it's almost as bad as supporting children having those surgeries and hormone replacement therapies when they're too young to understand about gender. The ghost picture that they found had actually been purposefully leaked to, the, to them by the mums because they do want children to solve all of the problems that they have in the cases that they try to solve because they're stupid and can't solve them by themselves. But they secretly did it because they don't want the people around them who are trying to vote for them to know that they don't actually do their work, they just pass it off to children. Other people immediately find out about this and it's a controversy now because Velma has breakneck speed and nothing is ever allowed to take its time. Also, the morgue people who showed up for about two seconds die because that's very important. What I think is really funny about this is that they made so much effort to put females in positions of power for like, you know, diversity and empowerment. They made a mixed race lesbian couple in a position of power in the police force and then have a running joke that they're corrupt, they got there from ill-begotten means, so they don't actually earn the position, they're incompetent, they don't care about anyone but themselves, and they force children to do the work for them. Is this show secretly based? It's also to the point where the, the townspeople got sick of these idiots, and they elected some white dude later in the season to try and improve their own safety because the lesbians aren't doing their job. And then, when we get to that point, that white dude will be written as incompetent like to a cartoonish degree specifically to make the lesbians look better so that the lesbians can go back to their job this is genuinely <laughs> something that happens and it's an, it's not me making a big thing about it i'm not the one who wrote this shit this is shit that they wrote okay <laughs> This reminds me so much of Family Guy because it's so stilted and just references. The jokes that they make are 80% references and I cut them out because it's like Facebook humor. Elma? Because as rich people say when they're asked to pay taxes, I ain't doing it. During the science fair, which is what this episode is about, Daphne and Amber are going to manifest clues for the murder to prove that manifestation is real for their science fair report. This is also a running joke in that God isn't real because white people bad, but non-binary witchcraft manifestation is real because non-binary good. And Velma just needs to open her eyes because they do actually prove that manifestation is real in the end of the season. Oh, there's also a musical number! Jesus fucking Christ. Black Shaggy is doing shock therapy on himself to stop his schizo freakouts because he's sick of his hallucinations and the food has stopped working. This shit is really fucking boring about Fred's mummy issues as well. They bring it up like in the worst reference humor kind of way and his dad also can't show affection because he's a man and man bad dads are bad wait why do i feel all warm and safe because that's what hugs feel like no mother said hugs drain children of their resilience science has side effects pot has not now look me in my painfully dry bloodshot eyes and apologize but because black shaggy used electroshock therapy on himself he also is no longer gay i'm sorry he's not i'm making that stupid joke he's not gay but he became a one of those sigma male guys who, who has no feelings and uses those greek statues on twitter and says retarded shit about like stoicism because he zapped his emotions out by accident. <laughs> Actually, he's better this way. Daphne became a witch. It's really dumb. 
So this is a Breakfast Club ripoff, and I'm not making an astute observation here because they themselves repeatedly point out that this is a Breakfast Club ripoff and it's really boring. The entire episode is legitimately them facing the camera and saying, we're doing Breakfast Club. It's so dated and boring. And then they're like, let's do some shenanigans be because it's funny. And they try to summon the ghost of the of Black Shaggy's grandma and Fred's mom or something to prove that ghosts are real and Amber really wants to prove that witchcraft is real. This is exactly the kind of rebellious thing Lamont would want us to do to fulfill his overdone 80s fantasies. It becomes a comment on 80s movies. Ooh, and that's meta, which is our generation's thing. And the business. We called us retarded. They, so they try to summon the ghost of Fred's mom and everyone else is just watching them being like Haha teenagers do shenanigans because this is the Breakfast Club reference episode. There's also lots of Beyonce references because it's like and it's, it's not even like actual references to her music in a way or anything like that. It's one of those weird stupid references that it's like everyone loves Beyonce, everyone loves Taylor Swift kind of thing where it's more a reference because they think that mentioning the name will make all the sycophants who like Beyonce immediately like the show because they're like we're showing people who like Beyonce are cool people. So it's not even like a joke about something that Beyonce's done or about a song that Beyonce has made or something. It's more like Everyone likes Beyonce, right? Kind of thing. She's not for me personally, but you get what I mean, right? At the end of it, Velma thinks that Amber faked the whole thing because she had, you know, done something about like to fake the seance, and she'll she'll get proven later because she's super special and unique and, and a, a special little guy. I don't. Know. So the bodies of the coroners who had died a couple episodes ago are found in the place where they did the seance, and. It makes it look like Amber's witchcraft is behind it because that's like the pentagram and all that stuff. There's also a very bad soapbox joke. Who the fuck wrote that? Did ChatGPT write this shit? How dare you accuse me of grandstanding? I am on a soapbox! And I- So they go to find Black Shaggy's grandma who is actually still alive and works under a different name in the insane asylum. Velma meanwhile discovers that social media is everything in the world and she goes through what every single other social media arc in every single other bad show has ever done where she instantly gets obsessed with the number on the screen until she just doesn't anymore and never brings it up again. And the reason why is because she was like, Amber used witchcraft to kill the coroners. I'm gonna say that about her because I don't like her and that's like the whole thing and she doesn't learn any lessons from this later. It is really funny, like, so remember how before I said that like everyone loves Amber so much that even the hillbilly hick characters use her pronouns? They wouldn't use her pronouns but they do in this show. <laughs> Also, the, the breakneck speed of the show, again, it's crazy. Like, they set out a couple minutes ago to find out this very big twist for the show that the grandma is actually still alive. But then they go into the asylum and they immediately get told, yeah, she's alive. And then they go find her. Within a matter of minutes. Why do I care about any of this? There's no, like, suspense. There's nothing. I get that some jokes that are used in cartoons like this is that it things happen quite fast because it's like a subversion thing, but this is not a good subversion joke. Things just happen very fast. It's like Batwoman. Things just accelerate. It's like fan fiction. But the new business that she has is that she brings rich people into her facility to remove their brains so that they have time to think and discover their true selves in like a therapy kind of way. And then in the meantime, she will do whatever she wants on their brains and then they'll come out being brand new and she'll put their brains back in their bodies. So because of Velma's social media, a mob started to chase Amber and literally try to burn her like a witch. So that Velma decided that she's going to make everyone hate her so that she can take Amber's place and then try to think herself out of this situation. And then she does absolutely nothing and learns no lessons because one of the moms, the, sh the detectives, comes in and says, Oh, um, the only men that should be afraid of the killer and stay at home all day are the men who have really big penises. So if you have a small penis, you can just stay out here. And because all the men are super insecure, they go home and they leave Velma alone. That's how they solve that issue. It never comes back again. They also argue about the ethical, racial problems of body swapping. Just do it? The grandma can't leave her secret facility because she doesn't want anyone to know that she's still alive. So she goes into Daphne's body so that she can save those brain characters 
from last season who had their brains taken out. They don't have their bodies back, so they're just around as brain jar people, and they're slowly dying because the brain fluid in the tubs need to be replaced, and the grandma is the only one who can do it. So that's what's happening there. It's career day, and everyone is depressed because dreams don't come true. The grandma shows up in Daphne's body, and she's kind of unfeeling and needs to save the, the whore brains, but she also wants to talk to the principal who's her daughter, but at the same time she can't do that because her feelings don't matter. The solution for this brain serum that needs replacing is like kind of off and it ends up breaking and not working anymore so they don't know what to do and they have to go to the military base to steal more ingredients. I guess the valuable lesson for this will be that dreams only come true if you step on everyone else which is very healthy. Meanwhile, Fred's arc is that he wants to date this old lady that he meets at a confessional and that's like a pedophile situation but they're gonna treat it as comedy because males aren't actually victims according to them even though if the same thing happened and it was about a female who was dating an older man the whole show would be about how horrible it is, rightfully so, but they're not doing the same courtesy when it's a male victim of course. Velma gets into the military base to find the solution for the brain stuff there's going to be a lot of military jokes as well, and normally I would try and talk about that, but they're not as much of a joke as the state of the real military in the West. VIP, do you mean very important person, or my fanfic Velma in Paris? Why is there a fanfic joke here? That doesn't even go with any- yeah, yeah, whatever. Comedy's dead anyway. So on the way, there's a bit of a detour, and they find out that the project that the grandma was originally involved in with the brain swapping was, is actually still going, and it was basically about making teenage disguises to put the military's brains into so that they could monitor the teenagers by pretending to be one as well. It's like a cover operation, but that's apparently still happening. And the military basically hides it. So when Velma goes back, the solution has already been made and she's like, why did I go and get the, the solution for you then if you already had one here? And the grandma says that it was actually a ruse for the whole time to go and check up on whether the project is still running, even though I'm pretty sure she could have just asked Velma to do that because Velma is still interested in the project. So that was a whole lot of nothing. Two, now check behind you. Behind you, check. Check one, two. Check behind you. I'm bearing a message in the sound check. Check one, two. Never said sorry before. What a weird sounding word, sorry. Oh my god, these jokes are so bad! But yes, they saved the day, the brains are happy, and the old lady that was f calling Fred to try and get into a relationship was actually the serial killer the whole time. The, the pastor in the Catholic church is dead, so yay, I don't know who this person is. Also, the moms lost their sheriff election because the killer might be a woman, and that is enough association for the entire town who is full of bigots to vote for the white man instead, even though I think that they vote voted for the white man because these detectives don't actually know how to do anything. It's like with shows like Batwoman that I talked about before, where I use the term Schrodinger's bigot. Schrodinger's bigot is basically when the entire town around the character needs to either hate them for bigoted reasons or celebrate them because they're a woman and they're empowering based on what the show's agenda is at that current time. So it'll change from episode to episode and you don't know which one it is until they tell you what it is. Right now the town is in bigot mode because Schrodinger's bigot needs to be on full force. The new sheriff says that all women will be re relocated to the caves for 48 hours because the killer is a woman, so they need to protect the men by isolating the women together for 48 hours in a cave. They're basically saying for this episode, all the women are like tongue in cheek, nodding to each other like women deal with this sort of stuff every day. Women are forced into caves by men every single day. and. And the women are taught to ignore injustice because women are super cool and it's like, okay. But the drama is that Velma's dad has left and dated some waitress lady and Velma's mom doesn't like them. So they just are gonna argue for the entire episode, I guess. Daphne's brain is still going through her whole thing. Um, she, she has this arc where she becomes the queen of the roaches and I don't really care. So because Amber does not identify as a man or a woman, she and her mum get paid to go out of town for a couple days because she won't fit into the caves or the men's zone. And that's funny to me because wouldn't a female killer who is in the situation just say that she identifies as non-binary so that she can skip town and then nothing will happen and then she can come back and start the murders all over again? It's really funny. 
It's almost like it, it has its benefits in modern society to pretend that you're one of the lefty genders and you get things from it. It's almost like that's a thing that people do because it's incentivized by the government and major corporations. Th there's a joke I can make about that. The women are so cool and organized that they're just having an amazing time in the cave and there's throw pillows and stereotypical things that women like. Soon enough, anyway. From this classic white void, there's a couple of ways these memory-inspired journeys can go. Can we stop being self-referential for five seconds? Yeah, but this is Daphne. She's still being stuck in the void for her self-discovery arc. So Velma is angry because she can't seem to really talk to her mom about anything. And they make this dig at male dorm room quotes, which I get that quotes in general can be pretty surface level and not actually say anything important. But I, what's wrong with saying excuses don't get results? I mean, it's true, right? If you want to be on that grind set, there's no problem. Do, do what you gotta do. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. The men, meanwhile, can't get anything done to solve the murder because they're squabbling and holding chili cook-offs instead of looking for the killer because men suck and women are brilliant. Decide that they're all gonna try and come together to make f the, the killer's identity known or something because, yeah. But they're still procrastinating on finding the killer, so it's up to the women to do it. The women discover that the old lady voice matches one of the voices on the baby talk box thing that they all have. So they think that the killer is actually pretending to be a woman the whole time. They, because women are so observant and smart and better than men that women immediately can solve all of these things and the men are just sitting around on their asses. Yep. This is this is a woke show, all right. Daphne discovers that her whole thing was that she's guilty that she made out with Amber or something, which first, gross, but secondly, that seems like a you problem. They also find out that Velma's dad was involved in this as a lawyer for a group of the victims for some reason, so that's really weird. And all of the men involved knew about the brain project, so... The women then break out of the caves because the men are no match for the women's power. Yeah, I'm sure sporting events also agree with you. Hmm. Really makes you think. This episode is about a bus ride with drama, and it's boring. Have to tell her what we did, even if it threatens your moral superiority. What we did? Uh, that was all you. And I'll always be morally superior. They also point out that Amber is actually superior to everyone else and that the thing about her kissing Daphne isn't her fault because because it's not her fault, nothing's her fault. She's super special and unique and awesome. Velma meets her dad who is currently on the run because he's supposed to be on house arrest because they suspect him for the murders. He hands her a USB drive full of stuff about the military project and she has to work it out because she's Velma and she solves all the mysteries. During their stupid road trip, they also trash the founders of the town because it's like, you know how those university students would go around and tip down statues of Benjamin Franklin and Abraham Lincoln and all these people because, you know, they're like problematic or whatever and try to like erase history. That's basically the same thing that's going on, but these people support it, obviously, which is brain dead, but I don't think I have to explain why. But it comes out that Velma's dad, since he's a lawyer, had actually met all of the people there because the people had worked for the project. They were looking to try and get some changes done because they felt uncomfortable in the workplace. And then there's this really big drawn out joke about how men don't actually feel uncomfortable in a workplace, men only make women feel uncomfortable in the workplace, and it doesn't happen the other way around ever, so men are all thoughtless pieces of shit who don't think that it's possible. Fellow soldier was creating an uncomfortable work environment in Project Scooby. An uncomfortable work environment? And let me guess, you struggle to believe that because most guys don't believe that's an actual thing. So they have to escape on the bus because their little impromptu protest gets attacked by the police because of course it does. And the truth comes out that Daphne did not actually kiss Amber, she did something worse. She tried to cast a Wiccan curse on, on Velma or something. I don't know why, this is white women problems, okay? But they find out that the military's new project using the grandma's research was to try and make a super soul who then became a problem for them because they made men uncomfortable at work. <laughs> that, that's the, I don't know why. The, the weird robot thing, a super soldier, is actually a dog, so I think you can see where this is going. And Amber has been working for the grandma the whole time. Why? I don't know. The dog monster is scrappy, by the way. <laughs> He's not the killer, but he's being framed for it because he was supposed to just be a mascot at the time. He says he's gonna show her good w her goodwill by letting her go after he has this little chat with her. They do the classic walk with the classic music with 
Amber as, as, the, as the new addition to further shit on all of the old Scooby-Doo fans, but they basically find Velma, who pretends that she doesn't know anything about the thing that took her or anything. She was just wandering around in the woods because she's covering for Scrappy now, so Scrappy can escape. Scrappy says that the person who made him was actually someone who d did not have their identity known, so they just called him Uncle Scooby instead, and he might be the real killer. And he was like everyone in the military base was trying to get Scrappy decommissioned because they didn't like Scrappy. Scrappy was the one who made everyone uncomfortable, but men can't get uncomfortable because uh, men don't understand. Men are the problem all the time. And the hallucinations that uh, Black Shaggy were having were actual real ghosts. That's why they weren't going away. So this entire season now is just ghosts are real, by the way, randomly. Oh, okay then, and no one cares. The military is covering up the murders by framing them on women because they don't want anyone to suspect the military and there's no women in the military in this world, but the women that are in the military in this world are treated like strippers and aren't taken seriously because men are scum and don't treat women seriously. Um, yeah, okay. My, gee, wouldn't it be crazy if, you know, in the real world, the presidential candidate got shot at by someone and the assassin that shot him was actually around for ages beforehand but the secret service were too incompetent to actually get the guy off the roof because they didn't feel like climbing up there and they made excuses for not being able to do their job to protect the presidential candidate that would be crazy i really that would be looking so bad for women in secret service as well i i am glad that that never happened in real life that would be crazy man this whole show would undermine its own message by the fact that that happened in real life but i'm glad that that never happened the ghost of fred's mom possesses him as a trial to see if he's strong enough but then he fights her off and then she fucks off because she's happy that he's strong enough now and uh, amber had initially said that she could be possessed instead to see what the message that the ghost had was uh, to have a proper conversation but uh, the ghost can't possess amber because amber is a super special mary sue who has super special powers because she's super special scrappy reveals that he was actually the killer all along and they they knew that all along so that the, their plan was to show him as the murderer and get him exposed for it and then he runs off and says that he'll get out in no time because the police and the military are all corrupt and his entire plan was just his thing was that he and uncle scooby are gonna use the bodies from the previous murders in season one that the military still has as a way to escape and start new lives and the grandma is actually in on it because she is the, gonna be the one who's gonna help them do the body swap. It's kind of underwhelming. Anyway. Oh my god, last episode. Everyone just gives up, which I should have done that when I started watching this, but here I am. But they decided to manifest a way to the solution because manifestation good, Christian god bad. Velma and Daphne switch bodies for the investigation because Velma was told by the, the people involved if they see her investigating anything, they're gonna kill her. So Daphne does it instead to, you know, something or other. Black Shaggy immediately finds the other bodies and is like, my grandma, why are you doing this? And the grandma's like, um, I was gonna br bring the the brains back to their bodies the whole time. Huh? I wasn't using them for nefarious purposes. The conclusion of the body swap is not anything helpful about the investigation, but actually that all women suffer because girls and nerds and pretty people all suffer and women's whole thing is suffering and they only suffer because men are the problem and men make women suffer. But the grandma's plan has been revealed and Scrappy has escaped prison and is making his way on uh, into the plan. <laughs> the Uncle Scooby actually is a woman the whole time and she disguised herself as a man because women aren't taken seriously in positions of power at all and women don't have any positions of power and women have never fucked up a position of power once in their entire life. All the men in the military are so horrible that they make women dress up in like sh slut outfits and parade around and that's very legal because the world hates women. The woman behind this all who invented Scooby, who was trying to escape with Scooby to stop him from killing so that she could start a new life, was that Velma's dad was dating all along. So the entire season is has been men are incompetent, women are the ones doing the jobs behind the scenes and men always take the credit for it and it's like okay you can say that, but you're the one who accidentally made a killer robot dog who murdered everyone, so it's your fault. So you're not really as competent as you seem, are you? Dumbass. But Scrappy comes to try and kill them and they don't know what to do because he's indestructible. But Velma dies when she gets drone strikes by the military. 
<laughs> and kills the dog by possessing him because her soul is so disgusting that it probably kills everything that it comes into contact with because she's such a stupid bitch. So that's the thing and she's a ghost now. I hope she stays dead but then Amber says that she's gonna bring her back on Halloween and that's gonna be what season 3 is I guess. I really think that they should just put her body into some homeless white veteran so that she can understand that white privilege is bullshit and how people actually have it in this world. But I also want her to stay dead because she's stupid and annoying and I wish that she dies. So, have fun with that.